Hi, and welcome to Larry's Computer Class. Today we're going to talk briefly about using the Internet. Uh, before I get started, I'll just let you know, part of the Internet is your emails. I have a separate video on emails. Um, browsers, you see your browsers, Firefox, Internet Explorer. I also have a separate video on browsers. I go through each browser and show you how to change your settings and make them secure, things like that. Today we're just going to briefly talk about the internet itself. Uh, when you're on your computer and you type in a web page, you're on your home computer, you type in www.amazon.com. Uh, your computer does not recognize exactly what that means. And talking briefly about an IP address. An IP address is the same thing as your home address. Every house has a different number, different street, different city, different town, so on. You know, your computers are the same way. Every computer has an IP address. An IP address is a number that looks like 155.97.47.001. It's uh, four areas. Each area can go from 1 to 255. Um, and your IB address, like I said, is your address to your computer. Uh, it's the address to every website has its own IP address. It's an address. It tells the computer where to go to to get the information you're looking for. And IP addresses are not stored on your computer. IP addresses are stored in what they call a DNS, a domain name server. Uh, quickly, a server is the same thing as a computer a little bigger. They're made to work a lot faster because they may have millions of people at one time coming to this server looking for information. So they, they work a little different in a computer but not much. They just work a lot faster and a lot harder. Uh, so when you type in a web address, Amazon.com, your computer locates a DNS server. says, I'm looking for the IP address of Amazon.com. The server will find Amazon.com, look up the IP address, and send the IP address back to your computer. Once your computer gets the IP address, then it can send the IP address out to what they call a hosting server. Same thing, it's just a, another server, but it does different things. A hosting server is where people with web pages uh, sign up with an account with a hosting server, and you upload all your files for your web page to this hoster. And when someone puts in your web address or sends your IP address to the server, the server will get all your files, all your web page information, and then it sends it back to your computer. And your browser, whichever one you're using, Firefox, Internet Explorer, whatever it is, will take all those files and the codes and it will decipher them and you will get a display on your computer screen. And that's how you get information from a www. address. Other uh, things, when you're on the internet, uh, the internet and the web are often thought of as a single thing, the same thing. They're actually not the same thing. Uh, the internet is all your www dot web pages. Anything that's a web page, um, a social network, Facebook, anything. You know, web page, this web page, anything is part of the internet. The web is actually all the computers and servers and, uh, and the hardware that make everything work that are all over the world. There's thousands of servers all over the world. Like I said, some are DNS servers that will give you information on IP addresses and tell your computer how to find something. There's host servers that actually store the files of web pages that your computer goes to and requests to get a web page and so on and so forth. And that's pretty much how the internet works. Um, once you open up your browser, you can, I have Google set for my home page, you can put in a web address here, www.amazon.com and actually, you don't even need the www anymore. You don't have to type that in. You can if you want. If it's a habit, that's fine. Uh, if you don't use it, when you hit enter, it automatically puts it there for you. And you can go to Amazon.com. 
go through the web pages. Uh, this is actually for shopping for books. There's all kinds of things you can look up. MP3 store for music, videos, all kinds of different things. Uh, they have, I'm sure they have what they call a, a shopping cart. A shopping cart is exactly what it is. When you click on something you want to buy, it adds it to your cart. And at the end, when you're ready to check out, you can actually, this one allows a wish list. You can make a list of things you want. Uh, not necessarily to buy, but just things you really want to buy maybe in the future. You can add them to your cart when you're ready. Uh, when you're done, you can view your cart. Right now it says zero items. And when you're done, you can click check out and put in your credit card information and pay for the items you get. Put in your shipping address if you haven't done it already. And next thing you know, in a couple of days, your item will be shipped to your house or wherever you want it to be shipped. Amazon, like most web pages, not all, but most, you have to sign in or you have to create an account. New customer, start here. Very simple. Uh, email address. No, I'm a new customer. Yes, I have a password. You just answer the questions. You would say, no, I don't have a password. And it will tell you to put one in. And you'll have to remember that. It's a good idea to write down your passwords. It's also a good idea if you have different accounts, uh, Amazon.com. Uh, if you have a online banking, where you can do your banking online, it's a good idea to use different passwords. Don't use the same password for your email and Amazon.com and your online banking. Because what happens is if someone gets a hold of that password, they have your password for all your accounts. So it's recommended to use different passwords. Write them down. It's uh, recommended to change them frequently every couple of months, every three months or so. Especially for like online banking and secure sites like that. Change them every couple months, every three months, so on and so forth. So you put in your email, you put in your password, sign up using Secure Server. Secure Server is what they call an encrypted server. What they do is they take your information, it converts it to a code, and then sends it over the internet. And when Amazon gets it, they decipher the code translate everything back to what it originally started as and then they have your information and very simply you can go to your account you can go to sign in your account and you simply put your email and your password click sign in and now you're on your account you have your own private account like I said you can keep track of all the things you want to buy you can go to your shopping cart you can purchase things so things like that. The most important thing is anything you sign into that you have to put an email and a password in, uh, you remember to sign out of them. They're going to say sign out or log out or whatever. Uh, I'm not signed in so it's not going to say that but always remember to log out. People can get into your accounts if you leave your computer. Someone types in Amazon.com and you haven't signed out. They have access to all your information. Um, and if you've put orders in before and your credit card information is stored on Amazon, people can go, go onto your website, they can buy things, change the address, use your credit card, have them shipped right to their house, things like that. So make sure you log out when you're done. A lot of web, web pages you don't have to sign into. Uh, your back button just brings you back to where you started. You can go back, you can go forward. You can bookmark these pages. Uh, that's also in the browser video. You can watch that video and see how to save pages. Uh, favorites if you're using Internet Explorer. Uh, bookmark if you're using Firefox. A couple of the other ones you need bookmark also. Uh, go back to the main page. Like I said, my main page is Google. Google, you can ask questions. You can search information, anything you want. Uh, you type in anything you want. Don't type in www here. That goes up top. Here, you just type in a question. How can I find a map of 
the USA. And it's going to bring you up a whole bunch of choices. And as you can see, it found 2,700,000 results. Now, they're not going to display all of them. They usually show the top maybe 50 pages or so. This goes up to 10. You can click next. I don't know how many it's going to keep showing, but it shows you quite a few, but it doesn't display any of them, all of them. It takes like the top 40 or 50 and displays them. And all you do is click on a link, and it will bring you to that web page. Shows your maps, give it a second to load. Anything with images like this, pictures, images, takes an extra half a minute to load, so you have to be patient. Uh, and you can go anywhere you want. You can click back, check out a different page, things like that. Uh, there's Google search, there's Yahoo search, there's Bing search, search engines. Up here, some browsers have a search engine here, Google. If you can't find something on Google, try Yahoo, Amazon.com, eBay. These are just shortcuts directly to these links. Uh, Wikipedia, Bing, Web Search, Search, Twitter, all these different things. Some are search engines, some are shortcuts. Uh, Twitter accounts, Facebook accounts. I talked to in another video under social media. Show you how to log in and start your accounts, things like that. Emails, if you have an email account, uh, you can see my email video. It shows you how to sign up for an email account. It shows you some of the security things to look forward to, be careful of, spam, hackers, stuff like that. Uh, never open email that you don't know where it came from. And that's it for the Internet. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was useful information. Thank you for visiting.